smoky river you've been good to me from every fallen timber be a strong standing tree hey how's it going everybody it's dusty tucker it's been a while since i've come to you with another video but Today I have an update slash kind of how-to video on how I um, make my made my antique um, 1873 Cattlemen's um, from the Parkerized finished revolvers that they were before. They looked I've had them for five to seven years, <clears throat> and the the black finish was kind of getting a little bit uh, scuffed up and everything, and it was starting to look a little bit yeah kind of ugly and whatnot. So I just decided to try to antique them. And my video that I posted before on the antiquing, I just used uh, Scotch-Brite pads. Um, and I think it was 800 or 1,000 grit sandpaper, wet sandpaper. But it, I, I did it kind of non, not in my comfort, I, I wasn't in my comfort zone when I was doing it. So I was a little bit, reluctant to go all the way with it and I was kind of hesitant on going I didn't want to wreck them in other words but I got comfortable enough I took it a step farther I'll just show you I took it a step farther this is what they look like now um, I decided to just completely take all the black finish off of it um, it, it, it looks really good now I think I'm pretty much done it. The only thing that I want to do now is maybe add some uh, brown patina on the top part. And there's how I'm going to do that is I'll, I'll explain that later on as I go. Handles are not that crazy red wood anymore. That was just way too much red for me. I sanded off. I think there was like varnish or something on it or some, some lacquer or something. I sanded it right down to the actual wood and I used raw linseed oil. I put about five coats on it so far. I'm just going to keep going until I get the shine that I like. I don't want it to be too shiny. I kind of want it to still look a little bit rough and uh, like a old kind of. But it, it turned out really nice. This is just one of them. I'll show you the other one here soon. And I took, uh, on the fit on the site here, I took a little bit of uh, brass colored paint, just uh, nail polish paint that I, that I uh, found. And I just touched the front blade just so it would be a lot easier to have uh, pretty like fast sight. I'll try to show you here. There, you can, you can see how easy that is to see that front front post. It's hard to do in reverse, but they're really easy to see that front blade. So I just decided to, to do that as well so you could uh, get quick target acquisition and you could aim true a lot quicker because it's kind of hard to see when everything's the same color, I find. So I just added that and you don't even really notice it from the side. There's a little bit of uh, browning happening on the blade that's just from the vinegar bath that I put it in. But I'll, I'll get to that, like I said, in a second. I'll show, I'll show you the other one here. The other one turned out a little bit better. This one almost has too clean of a look to it. This one has a more kind of rugged look to it. I kind of like this the way this one came out a little bit better. And uh, I'm learning as I'm doing this stuff. So what I did was I left the cylinder in the bath a little bit less than I left the rest of it. So the cylinder has a little bit more of a darker color to it now, which has actually looked pretty cool. And I put a little bit of burn marks on the on the handle there, but I'll get into that later. So it's kind of cool how they turned out. I really, uh, I'm really digging it. They look way better than that, just that matte black finish. So now I have a nice pair of these suckers that look way better than that Parkerized finished, and. So basically what I did to get that look, so if you want to have the same look, you don't have to do that to the grips. I just decided to throw that in there just because there was a, uh, a nick, there was a dent in the wood. So I sanded it a little bit farther and then I, I torched it so you can't really see it now. Um, 
that's the reason I did that, but it kind of looks good. I did it on both sides. I did it on that side and a little bit on that side, just to give it more of a dark, old look to it. This one, I didn't. I kind of left it plain Jane. It looks good. This one had a little bit cooler, uh, nice and nicer looking wood grain on it too, so I didn't really want to torch this one very much. I just kind of went over it really fast to accent the grain a little bit. Um, so how I did it was I took a tray. Um, I took all the internal parts out of it. So all of your um, springs and trigger uh, assembly, not the trigger, the trigger itself went in the bath. But all your internal parts, I'll, I'll try to show a picture of all the parts that I left. I actually just left it in an oil bath because I wanted them to be nice and clean and good to go. So I left them in an oil bath and all the other parts that were like all the external parts. So the trigger, the back strap, the hammer itself, um, all the screws, all the, screw, all the external screws, all of them went in the bath. Uh, the loading gate, I disassembled the loading gate and, but the hardware that controls the loading gate, that went into the oil bath because it's not external. Plus you don't want to wreck your, uh, you don't want to wreck those lubricated parts with uh, vinegar. And some, before some people get crazy, they're, well, if you took the finish off, aren't they going to rust? Um, two, there's two reasons I took, I, I don't really care. First of all, um, I, I kind of want it to rust because I want that brown patina but if you actually don't neglect your guns and you put some of this stuff, even after just handling this, I'm going to be oiling it back. However, I might not actually because I want to get that brown patina kind of along the barrel and the top of the frame and maybe some cylinder. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start shooting these black powder and then the patches that come out that I, uh, when I clean them, I'm going to rub them over top of the gun and I'm going to really closely monitor it so it doesn't get too bad. I'm still going to clean the barrel and the the, the, the cylinder and all the chambers and everything. I'm going, to, I'm going to clean them. I don't want them to get uh, fouling build up and crap. I don't want to get pitting and stuff, but I want the nice brown patina and everything over top of the, the, the gun on, on the top side of it and maybe some on the cylinder. So I'm going to kind of leave that patch, rub it on it and everything just to see how that turns out and not oil it for a while on the outside. I, I just oil it on the outside for now because I don't know when I'm going to shoot these again. It might be a while so I kind of want to keep it intact. But anyways, so all those external parts including the cylinder and the barrel, I definitely suggest taking off your ejecting uh, housing. Take off your the housing here. The spring, don't put the spring in the bath. The spring needs to be in the oil or wherever else, somewhere else. But this little rod piece that's in there, that needs to go in the bath because it's external. You can see it here. Plus it really doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you oil it before you put it back in, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, so put all of that in the bath. I left everything in the bath. In this gun, I left everything in the bath for about two hours. That's Remember, that's after I had already done the Scotch Bright and Thousand Grit sandpaper, and eventually I even used leather. I went to town on it with leather. I'll show a picture of what they look like my first attempt of trying to antique them. You can still see like scratch marks and stuff of the way the, of the grain of the stuff that I was sanding. And uh, there was a guy who told me that if you go, if you go this way and then this way, it might have turned out a little bit better. You wouldn't have noticed it as much, but. I wasn't too sure what I was doing. This was my first time trying to antique something. So, um, yeah, that one went in the bath for two hours. And you know, it, it just peels the finish right off of it. Um, some people might suggest that don't do that with the, the barrel part. Or maybe you could plug... If you're not comfortable with it, you could plug this end of the barrel and the other end of the barrel before you put it in the bath. But I decided to leave it any, anyways because it'll clean out everything that's inside of it. All the stuff that you couldn't typically clean um, with your rods and everything like that. It actually brought out a lot of stuff. Like I thought they were clean when I was doing that. When I took it out of the bath, I ran a couple of uh, patches through uh, after the uh, solution, after the uh, baking soda or as a baking powder, I can't remember what I used. Uh, to neutralize the vinegar you want to do that after 
but I'm jumping all over the place here. Um, after I took this out of the vinegar bath, I took a couple of patches through and I pulled out so much crud inside that barrel. I was surprised to see how much of that came out. And then I checked, I looked uh, down the barrel with the light and it looked like it was unfired. It looked like a brand new, brand, there was no leading, no fouling, there was nothing. And there was no pitting, by the way, um, after two hours. So I cleaned it right up and put a shot of ballast doll with a patch down at the last time and it looked like a it looked like an unfired barrel that vinegar just completely cleaned out I wouldn't suggest doing that every time because it eventually is going to start eating at the rifling inside your barrel um, I was I was wondering about that when I did it but it turned out fine and as far as accuracy wise it hasn't done anything with that either so I'm assuming if you would leave it in it overnight or something, it would probably start uh, decaying some of your rifling, but I'm just, I just wanted to take all the finish off. So yeah, like I said, this one was two hours. Um, this one, the cylinder was only about an hour and maybe an hour and a quarter, but the frame, the rest of it was about an hour and almost two hours. So you can see the difference. I kind of wish I did that with both of them. I experimented on the second one, the first one. I just dunked it all in a big bath and let it sit for two hours and it all came out the same color. But I wanted to try something different with my next one, um, coloration. And the main reason I wanted to do that was because this is my newer one. This one has the, the fine point front post on it. And I like that one in my offhand. So I wanted to make sure that there was a visual difference between my offhand gun and my main hand gun. This is my main hand gun. This one has a more square front post sight on it. And this is the one I'm used to using on my right hand. Don't ask why, I, I have no idea. I've just gotten used to doing it that way. And then this is my um, off, offhand one with the point sight on it. And that's really the only difference between these two revolvers that I could find. Um, so it's up to you how long you want to put it in for, but it's completely your fault if you put it in way too long. Um, like I said, I started with the scop. You don't have to do it this way. You might be able to get away with just dunking it in the solution. And uh, but I figure that you're it's you're, something is going to want to eat the surface. You're going to want to get the solution underneath of that finish. So I would suggest doing this first before you do the bath. And I would just go over the entire thing. Make sure you get it. It's just like when you paint something. When you paint something, you don't just paint over a shiny flat surface. You actually need to rough that surface up so the paint can actually bind to that surface. If it's too smooth, it's just gonna flake off. And it's gonna be the same thing it might take a really long time in the vinegar bath to actually start eating away at some of that finish. Um, I'm pretty sure it works for other finishes too, like the bluing and uh, and whatnot. But honestly, I like the bluing too much that I don't think I would antique the bluing. But the park, the black parkerized finish just looks so like ugly, especially after a while when you start getting light scratches and scuffs on it. It does not look very <laughs> good at all. So. That's why I decide to antique these guys. And so yeah, just scuff everything exterior surface wise with the pad. You don't put the handle, you don't put the wood in the solution, but you do put the back strap and, and uh, trigger guard and everything in there. Um, what else can I say? Um, I kind of wish I was doing this on the video, but I decided not to because I wasn't 100% sure how it was gonna turn out. And you can go as far as you want with wood shrinkage too. I tried to imitate a little bit of wood shrinkage on the handle. Like you can see there's a little bit of a, a gap here and a tiny little bit of a, uh, a gap there. I kind of did that purposefully when I was sanding off the finish. I wanted to go in on the corners a little bit just to make it look like it was uh, wood shrinkage over uh, a long period of time. So I kind of imitated that as well you don't have to do that if you don't want to you don't even have to sand the handles you could leave them however you want but I did not want that red finish I like I like the natural look of wood which is why I used linseed oil instead of any kind of like varnish or lacquer to make it way too shiny so this stuff if you want like a 
it's kind of hard to explain, but if you want like a dull shine, like kind of a natural shine, I, uh, linseed oil. And I like the raw linseed oil, not the uh, boiled stuff, because the boiled stuff is toxic. This stuff is natural. This stuff is actually food safe. I use this for everything. I use it for my knife handles. I use it for a lot of things. I use it for my walking stick. I just prefer natural stuff over, over toxic crap. Anyway, um, so yeah, I put everything in the bath and I'll try to show a picture of that too for two hours. And when I took it out of the bath, you want to neutralize it. Otherwise it'll keep eating at it. You could, you might be able to get away with just oiling it and try to neutralizing it that way. But what I did was I, I rinsed it. I took all the parts out, drained the, um, vinegar solution into a different container and then I rinsed it with water just water rinse it for about five minutes make sure you get over everything every every surface every orifice of the the components that are inside that bath and then once you're done you want to make a bath of uh, baking soda and water to neutralize it it'll have like a slimy texture to the water and that's about the consistency you want I just did I think I did like three tablespoons and about two liters of water just to make the solution and I think that's about what I used and I let it I mixed it all up and shook it around put all the components in there and I let it stay in there for about I don't know I think it was 25 minutes or so just to kind of neutralize all of the effects of the vinegar and then once that was done I took it out dried it all off and went over everything thoroughly and oiled everything I cleaned the barrel, I cleaned the cylinders, or the chambers in the cylinders, I cleaned everything, every orifice, and then I uh, put a light coat of oil on everything. I, on, honestly, I just laid it out on a mat and just misted this all over everything, and then the oils on my hands from the oil, I just kind of went over everything and made sure it was, the vinegar was dead and everything was oiled. And then with the little container of all the stuff that I put in the oil bath, all the internal components and all that stuff. I uh, started reassembling the main parts of the gun to make sure that everything was uh, good that way. And then I took the wood out to my shop and sanded the handles and everything. I didn't use my belt sander because it probably would have taken too much material off. So I just used my, uh, just a piece of hand sandpaper. I think I used like 600 grit or something. It took a while to get past the finish, the varnish finish. But once you got past that, you actually got to the wood and you can see the different layers of everything. I just kept going until I got just wood, just nothing left but wood. And I just did the sides and the bottom. I didn't worry about inside cause I didn't want the fit to be screwed. So I left the inside and everything, but I just did both sides. And then once I was done that, I blew it all off with an air gun and then I used linseed oil in a rag and basically what I did was I just put it in a, a vise with a piece of leather one gun in this way one gun in this way put with a piece of leather over top so you don't wreck your gun and clamped it down took the rag linseed oil you don't need a lot it very little um, Put one coat on both sides and then I came back inside. I let it sit for about 25 minutes. Went back outside, put another coat on. I did that about six or seven times. And I think I'm, a, this is about, I think this is eight times right now. So you have like that matte shine kind of thing to it. You can keep going, but the wood is only gonna soak so much of that stuff up before it, um, it just starts to gel up on top. Once it starts to like gel up on top, you have to kind of scrape it off with your fingers or a wet cloth or something and once it starts to gel up like that that means the wood has absorbed as much as it possibly could for now so what you could do is you could try buffing it with a rag when it's dry you take a a, a slightly damp rag or you could take some um what's this stuff called one sec here i think it's just saddle soap or something like yeah i take some of this stuff on a uh, a rag just a little bit not a lot and just buff the crap out of that wood and then you should have a nice like dullish shine kind of like this or like that so it's shiny but it's not like 
um, reflecting sunlight kind of shiny. It's just, it looks like a natural um, wood kind of shininess to it. Like, I don't know. That's, that's, that's was perfect for me. This is oil right here. That's why it's extra shiny in that corner. Um, that's, that's how I wanted it. And this is pretty much how I'm going to leave it other than browning it with the black powder uh, cleaning patches. Um, I figured out a couple of loads for Black Powder 38. Um, I, could, I actually figured out two. One for round ball and one for uh, black powder. There's a, there's a mold I want to get specifically for 38 or 357 caliber revolvers, and it's the Snakebite Grease Wagon. Uh, it's on Big Lube's website there. That is one that I might be getting in the future because eventually um, I would like to shoot those out of here I know it's a little unnecessary because the barrels are short that lots of that black powder fouling is just gonna blow out past the barrel and not stick inside but I like to be authentic with as much stuff as possible not not like historically accurate or historically correct but I just want to be safe like let's say I want to shoot out of a rifle then I can just load the same projectile and not have to worry about it. It's a little bit of a longer projectile. I'll try to show a picture of that too if I remember what the snake bite grease wagon projectile looks like. It's got a big lube groove for black powder lubricant, just like the Mav Dutchman for the 4440 or the other one for the 45 Colt, which I have both of those molds and they work really good in those guns. Um, another thing you could do, like I said, if you wanted to take it another step further than this, and um, I didn't go as far as pitting. I didn't want to do the pitting. There's a little bit, but that's only because of the dings and dents and stuff that I had previously um, had in this gun. It just kind of shined. It just kind of came through the, the vinegar. The vinegar kind of attacked it a little bit, but it looks, it looks like natural wear for the most part now. Better than it did the first time I attempted it. So I apologize for those people that watched the first one thinking that's how it... Um, I was just not 100% comfortable with doing it. And maybe I shouldn't have posted the video on it quite yet. But um, there's not too many views on it. So I might even just pull it down and just put this one in place of it. Um, but no, they turned out really well. I'm really um, digging it. Um, I think the paint that I used for it was... It was just called, I don't, I don't know where I put it. Um, it was just called Brass, Matte Brash, I can't talk, Matte Brass Nail Polish. And it just looks like solid brass. Like, you can see it there on the front of the site. I put them on both. That way I have a nice quick sight. I could have, I was actually tempted to paint the whole sun, the whole uh, front sight, like the sides and everything. But I think that might have looked a little bit goofy. So I just... Just painted the back part and it's easy if let's say someone doesn't agree with you that you shouldn't be doing that or something like that even though it makes no sense because there's people that shoot matches that have adjustable rear sights <laughs> I know they're not good for some categories but people I swear people just complain to complain um, you can just scrape it off and it just comes off it's nail polish it just pretty much flakes off so that's that's no worries there at all um, when I'm reassembling these, the screw that holds the ejector rod housing on the barrel has very few thread counts inside the, the barrel. It's, it's tapped on the barrel, but it's not very far. So every time I reinstall these, I always put Loctite on that one. There's a few that I put Loctite on on this gun but that is one of the main ones because if you are shooting and that screw falls out <laughs> this whole housing is going to come off and uh, you're not going to have a way to eject your shells unless you have a stick or something with you but <laughs> um, it's happened to me and so by experience I always lock tight just blue blue lock tight these suckers every time and uh, you have to keep an eye on these ones too after you shoot make sure you don't lose them I've bought a couple of used firearms now that have not had screws because they're not paying close attention when they're shooting they'll actually vibrate loose and they'll fall out so keep an eye on your screws <laughs> that's just a little helpful tip so I'm trying to think if I missed anything in this video um, after I did the handles 
uh, I just used, uh, I think it was 600 or 500 grit, and I just made it as smooth as I could. I think I went down to 300 grit, or no, that's the wrong way. I think I went up to 800 grit or something like that. I got it as smooth as I possibly could. So now it's really smooth except for the little uh, bit of burning, but that's whatever. I actually want a little bit of, uh, I don't want it so smooth where it's gonna, if my hands are greasy, they're, they're just gonna slip out of my hands. So I wanted a little bit of texture. So I think that's why I burnt this. So I might do it to the other one too, but I could, there's a little bit of grip there. So it's not just gonna slip out of my hand. Anyway, um, I think that's pretty much all I have for this video. Um, explaining wise, um, I did take the uh, the pin, the cylinder pin, and while I was doing this, um, it, they were always a little bit of a pain in the butt to take out, to disassemble and clean. So what I did was I took that thousand wet sandpaper grit. I uh, put I put this end. I chucked it in my drill, just just a cordless drill, just something like just like this. I put it in my drill and I took. A little bit of oil and dabbed it on the wet sandpaper and I took the sandpaper around and I just went up and down probably like 15 20 times and now these pins come out like butter they're just they come out so nicely compared to what they used to they were a little bit rough before because of the machining and whatnot but now they are beautiful and there's no wobble so I didn't take too much material off so if you have an issue with that that's a way you can eliminate that no problem there um, if you have any other questions or comments go ahead and shoot I might be leaving something out here um, I was tempted to brand my initials uh, my DT on the sides of the handles I don't know I might do that in the future but if there ever comes a time where I'm gonna sell these I kinda don't want to have any markings on them so that the next person doesn't have to worry about that kind of thing um, but yeah, no, I think that's pretty much all I have for this video. Uh, if I missed anything, I'll clip it in later or stitch it in or something like that. If not, then I think that's pretty much all I have. Maybe I'll show a video of me shooting these suckers with black powder. And I'll, uh, I'll keep updates on my uh, browning patina that I'm going to try to do in the near future. And I'll maybe add it to a different video. So... That's pretty much how I uh, antique them to this level. In this level. So hopefully you guys like the video. Um, Dusty Tucker signing out. Until next time, keep shooting uh, black powder. <laughs>